The first few instructions fall under the general heading of inputs and outputs, but I'm sneaking in an extra instruction there as well. The nice thing about mnemonics is that you can usually take a good guess at what the instruction means just by reading it. From the I.O. category we've got INP, short for input, as well as OUT, the mnemonic for output. Straightforward so far? I've taken the opportunity to sneak in HLT or HALT, which tells a program to stop running. Without this command, your program would run forever, so it is reasonably important. Let's take a look at our first assembly program to demonstrate how these three instructions work. Notice that in the code on the left, none of the instructions have an operand. There's no data needed for these instructions. Aside from the code on the left, we've got our program counter in the top right. This should always tell us the line number of the next instruction we're going to. Remember that, it's always the next instruction not the current one. It'll be obvious why that's the case in a few minutes time, but it's a place where people often make mistakes. This big old yellow box here is the accumulator. This is where the results of any mathematics, logic or load operations are going to go. Think of this as the one fits all bucket where anything that we want to work on needs to be stored or loaded into. Let's see how this simple three command script is going to work to get a handle on assembly programs as a whole. If we click the run button to start the FDE cycle, then the first place the program goes is to the first line, selecting this as the active line of code that we're processing. This means that the PC, the program counter, increments because that always points to the next instruction. With that done, we can start the decoding process. We take a look at our instruction, which is INP, a mnemonic for input. This instruction takes the input that the user types in and stores it in the accumulator. Now, at this level, we're only going to be talking about numeric data, numbers. So we'll assume that a number is going to be typed in by the user in all cases. The CPU, having decoded the instruction, now needs to get to the task of executing it. We wait for the user to input a value, and they've gone for 42. And this immediately gets put into the accumulator. Great. With the execution complete, the system goes back into fetch mode. It looks at the program counter and moves to read line 2. Remembering that the PC always points to the next instruction. This then increments and we move on to the decode part of the cycle. Decoding the instruction out or OUT is fairly straightforward. This is a mnemonic for output and will place the value that's currently in the accumulator on the screen. Execution of this instruction is exactly what you'd think it would be. The number 42 appears on a new line on the screen. With execution of that line complete, the cycle returns to fetch, using the PC to place us at line 3 and incrementing the PC. Decode brings us to instruction that is not part of I.O. This is the mnemonic HLT, short for HALT. It stops the fetch decode execute cycle completely and, by extension, stops the program from running. When we execute this instruction, the program simply stops. It's worth noting that the HLT instruction is part of the program control. Coloured purple in my videos, which are the only instructions allowed to affect the running of the code. And that's it for our first three instructions. Our complete set of input and output instructions and one of our control instructions mean that we can currently build a very simple program.